me uh, start with a, a, a one year anniversary that you may not know about um, on this this version of AI Insights with John Rose. Um, maybe you don't know it, but the reason this YouTube series even exists is because about a year ago, I went after I had taken over as a chief AI officer and got started on this journey, I went to Asia, specifically to Australia, Singapore, Japan, a bunch of countries and and had a lot of conversations. I spoke to probably, uh, I'd say 50 or 100 chief AI officers, CIOs, CDOs. And I came back and every one of those conversations was fascinating and every one of them wanted to have a follow on. But what people wanted to talk about is they wanted to know what we were learning. They wanted to know what, how was our experience going? What have we discovered? And so I gave a challenge to our marketing organization saying, we need a way to scale our communications in real time to people that are interested in the AI journey. And I didn't know what they were going to come up with. And they came up and said, let's do a YouTube thing. And, 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 and off we went. So it is almost exactly a year from that date. And funny enough, I just got back from Australia and Japan. <laughs> so I was over in Asia Pacific again, right around the same time. I was doing the keynotes at our big forum events there. And so let me give you a little update. You know, uh, you know a year has gone by. And it's interesting to see the progress and, and what's been happening. And so in both of those countries, uh, you know, the first thing that was very obvious, even though it might not have been obvious to the individual customers, because when you're living it day to day, you might not think you're making any progress. There's been significant progress in both countries. There are uh, examples of customers that are in production. There is a much more mature thinking about AI. People are being much more rational about it, but they're also being more structured. Um, we still have the scenario that the vast majority of enterprises are not fully in production producing significant ROI, but there are almost no customers I talk to now, and definitely in Asia, that are sitting on the sidelines. A year ago, that wasn't true. There were some people that were wait and see, as opposed to, I got to get moving. Everybody's moving. Uh, some people are actually in production. Many people are still learning and trying to figure out exactly what to do and where to prioritize. But it has been, you know, significant progress. There is definitely uh, an active AI market in the enterprise in in Asia Pacific now after a year, which is, you know, very nice to see. Um, the second thing that was very consistent is governmental engagement. The concept of sovereign AI didn't actually really exist about a year ago. It's kind of it wasn't even really a term. Today, it's very central. And so I got a chance to meet with Australian government officials and, and J Japanese government officials, and, and we had some really substantive conversations. They weren't high level, what is AI? Were, there were discussions about how do we actually use it within the government? Uh, how do we apply it to law enforcement, to national security? What, you know, and they were active customers. In other discussions, it was, hey, now that we're getting this technology organized, how do we create policies and rules to do it intelligently and safely? And while there's a general regulatory theme around the world, this was much more specific, like what kind of rules should I put on agents? Should I require every agent to have an identity? Should I require it to be searchable? Should I have a global naming convention? These were discussions we we're having. And we don't even have answers to all of them fully yet. But I think the level of governmental eng engagement has gone up significantly. They are no longer treating this as somebody else's problem or a theoretical problem. They are either existing customers doing this to themselves and or they are actually thinking about the frameworks of practically making this work in a safe way that helps their industrial base. Um, the, the, the third thing that we, we did see is that there's still a lot of work to do, though it is important to realize that even if culturally you want to take your time and you want to be very thorough, sometimes you have to move fast. In fact, in a discussion in Japan, I threw out something called the 100 day challenge where I, I just simply said, Adele, when we choose to do an AI project, we want it in production at scale in 100 days. And that was a very alien concept to most of the customers, in, uh, not just in Asia Pacific, but everywhere. But that's a reality. If it takes you two years to roll out your AI project, it'll be obsolete before you even finish it. And so the culture of speed has to now permeate. I think that's probably our biggest challenge globally. And in certain regions, there's a culture of very cautious, predictable, safe, uh, and that is still important, but you're gonna have to move faster because if it takes too long to roll these technologies out, it, it will be too late to actually get any value out of them. And then the last thing I'd leave you with is, uh, you know, even though Agentic is new and it's just beginning to emerge, Every conversation I had, people wanted to understand what this was and how to navigate it. Because we as an industry have created tremendous confusion. We called everything an agent, which is wrong. 
You've heard me talk about an agent as a software system. It can operate autonomously. It might have an LLM and it might have other tools and knowledge graphs around it. But the bottom line is it is not a tool. It is a user of tools. It is a digital skill. And, you know, there's been tremendous confusion created around this by misusing the term and creating kind of agent washing. We had to unwind a lot of that in these conversations, get people back to understand that, look, two halves of the enterprise journey. One, unlock your proprietary data with chatbots and coding assistants and other tools. And the second, digitize your skills with agents. And whether those skills are the ability to autonomously write software or refactor code or to run a process to completion or to run a complex process with a collection of agents, they are different things, but they are both valuable and they are both important and both of them will help unlock value. So there was a lot of that discussion, but it does tell me that you know, the gap between kind of bleeding edge and mainstream has narrowed. And even customers that weren't fully in production were asking questions about really advanced technologies like fully autonomous agents and multi-agent ensembles. So that, that to me bodes well because people are becoming very well educated, they're interested, and they're still moving towards that goal of getting into production, producing ROI and transforming their businesses. So, you know, after, you know, a, a, a year, of you know, starting these conversations, it is interesting to see that you know, in the same region, one year later, significant progress. So good on you, Australia and Japan, and, and for every other country in the world that I visit, I bet I'll see the same thing. So thanks, I guarantee a year from now, it will be even faster.